We as humans try to control every aspect of our lives. We try to control where we live, where we work, where we go, where we want to eat, and what we want to wear. But the one thing we definitely cannot control is how much time we or others have left on earth. The Bible even tells us in the book of James that time is short, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow, for you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. So what is it that you're putting off for tomorrow that you should be doing today? As Christians, when God is leading us to do something, 99% of the time it will take us out of our comfort zone. You might be led to pray with a family member, confront a friend heading down a wrong path, or share your testimony with a co-worker that has never believed in Jesus. Without a doubt, when God leads us to do something for Him, we immediately feel a sense of fear, doubt, and question what will happen if I end up doing this. I have been there. When I was in high school, I remember being led to invite my great aunt to church one time, and boy, did her response shock me. Not only did she say no, but she proceeded to yell and cuss me out very angrily. That definitely made me think twice the next time God led me to invite somebody to church or to talk to someone about Jesus. Years later, I was being burdened in my heart to talk to my grandmother, whom I was very close to. I was being led to talk to her about Jesus, but I was riddled with fear and worry because I didn't want to damage our relationship. Was she going to cuss me out like her sister did? I put it off day after day, month after month, but the tugging on my heart to talk to her remained. In fact, as time passed, it even got stronger. I was feeling a sense of urgency, but didn't understand why. Then one morning, after getting home from work, I finally decided to talk with her. I asked her if she had ever accepted Jesus as her Savior. She said no. Then I asked her if she believes in who Jesus is, that he is the Son of God, who lived a perfect life, and died on the cross for her sins, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, and will return one day. With tears in her eyes, she said yes. And then we prayed together. This occurred in March of 2000. Soon after this conversation, her health started to deteriorate as she was dealing with Alzheimer's and rapidly growing cancer that we did not know she had until it was too late. She ended up dying nine months later in December of 2000. If I would have kept making excuses, if I would have kept rejecting God's nudging of me to speak with her, I would have missed my opportunity and I would have had a difficult time forgiving myself. Don't get me wrong, each person is responsible for accepting or denying Jesus. But if I would not have talked to her and then she died, I would have never known if she believed in Jesus or not. I would have ended up spending the rest of my life wondering if I will see her in heaven one day. God will put people in your life that may not listen to a preacher, an evangelist, or some churchy person, but may only listen to you when it comes to Jesus or needing to change course in their life. Perhaps God is leading you right now to talk or pray, give encouragement, or minister to someone you know and love. Do not make any more excuses. Do not believe the lies of the enemy. Do not put off what God is leading you to accomplish. Do it now. Will everyone we talk to listen to us? Will they always change their lives around? Will everyone accept Jesus as their Savior? No. Of course, it can be scary to have those God-led conversations with people, but whether they politely say no or cuss you out, remember they are not rejecting or attacking you as much as they are rejecting God. We are commissioned by Jesus to reach people for Him. See, Jesus will never lead us to do something for Him without Him also being with us every step of the way. We simply need to trust and obey God because you never know what is on the other side of your obedience to Him. Dear God, give us the strength to be obedient to You. If we are being led to talk to someone specifically in our lives, help us not listen to the lies of the enemy. Help us not succumb to fear of the what if and what they might say. Help us be your hands, your feet, and your mouthpiece, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.